Let's look at problem 732 from the textbook. This is actually one of the problems that I assigned for the homework for this chapter as well. In this problem, we are given a vertical bar that's connected to a two-force member, so another bar, and experiences a force of 6 kilonewtons pushing to the right on point E. For this problem, we want to determine the internal forces and the internal moment acting at point D. In other words, we want to find the normal force, the shear force, and the bending moment at that point. I like this problem because most of the other internal forces problems we've dealt with in this class have had horizontal bars, which means that normal force was always in the x direction and shear force was always in the y direction. In this case, our normal and shear forces will have different directions. So let's start. The first step in an internal force problem is to draw a free body diagram. In this system, we have two members, AE and BC. So we want to choose which of those two members to draw the free body diagram on. In this case, most of the forces, actually all the forces, are acting on member AE because whatever hinge reactions occur at C will also be experienced at point B and will also be exerted on this bar. So the best thing to do is to draw your free body diagram for member AE. I have a hinge acting on A, so I will have an X and Y reaction. I have a hinge connection from member BC to member AE. However, because this is a bar as well, the force will only be in tension or in compression. So I can simplify the force at point B by taking it to be equal to um, maybe a tensile force that goes along this bar. I'm assuming it's ten a tensile force, but if I'm wrong, all I have to do is change the direction of the arrows once I get a negative sign. I also have an external force of 6 kN acting at point E on the top of the beam. So this is what my free body diagram looks like. I can draw some dimensions. We have 4 meters from point A to point B. And we have 3 meters from point B to point E. We're not counting point D just yet, because we're drawing this free body diagram so that we can find our reaction forces first. So let's go ahead and do that. To find our reaction forces, we have to apply the equations of equilibrium, since this is a static system. Let's start by taking the sum of moments about point A. We don't want to take the sum of forces along the x-axis, because we will end up with two unknowns. Similarly, we don't want to take the sum of forces about the y-axis because we will still end up with two unknowns. So let's start by taking the sum of moments about point A. And we choose point A so that we can eliminate two of the unknowns. So what forces are causing a moment about point A? We're going to have the x component of my force BC. The x component of the force BC will be equal to the force times the slope. So how do I find the slope? I can go back to my original drawing and I'll see that this bar has a 4 meter displacement in the y direction and a 3 meter displacement in the x direction. If we want to look at this from a geometrical perspective, then we're looking at a right triangle with sides of 4 and 3. This means that the hypotenuse has to be equal to 5, applying the Pythagorean theorem. Now what this means is that if I want to find the x component of my force, I have to multiply the magnitude of the force 
times 3 and then divided by 5. That is the slope method. So this is the x component of this force. But we're not trying to calculate forces. We're trying to calculate moments. So we'll take this x component and then we'll find the distance from my point A to that x component, which is 4 meters. This x component of the force will cause a counterclockwise moment, so I'll give it a positive sign. Additionally, I have a 6 kN force acting at a distance of 7 meters. Creating a clockwise moment, so I will give it a negative sign. Now I can solve for my unknown force BC, which should be equal to 6 times 7 divided by 4 divided by 3 over 5, or just 17.5 Kilions. Now that I know force BC, I can apply my sum of forces in the x and y directions. In the x direction, I have my unknown reaction force AX. I have the x component of my force BC acting in the negative x direction, so minus force BC, that's 17.5 kilonewtons times this slope, which is 3 over 5. And I have a 6 kilonewton force acting in the positive x direction. Now I can solve for my unknown reaction AX, which should be equal to 4.5 Kilonewtons. Finally, I can take my sum of forces in the y direction. In the y direction, I have my unknown reaction force AY assumed to be positive. I have the y component of this force BC acting in the negative y direction. So I'll have minus my force BC of 17.5 kilonewtons, and for the y component, our slope component will be 4 over 5. And there are no other y forces in our free body diagram, so all of this should be equal to 0, which gives us a reaction force in the y direction of 14 kilonewtons. Okay, so we found all of our reaction forces. Now we can go ahead and make our section cut in order to find our internal forces. In this case, we want to find the internal forces at D. And D is a point that is located at 3 meters from point A. So if I go back to my free body diagram, at approximately 3 meters from point A, I have my point D. My cut has to go through that point and should preferably be perpendicular to the axis of my bar. So I'm going to cut this section and I'm going to try to eliminate the top part and focus only on the bottom part because we'll have less forces to consider. My new free body diagram for the section that I cut will look like this, where I have my reaction force in the y direction of 14 kilonewtons, my reaction force AX of 4.5 kilonewtons, and at point D I will have my internal forces. I'm going to assume that they are positive, so I'm going to start with my normal force my shear force, and my bending moment. In this case, I'm assuming positive directions for all my internal forces. If you don't remember what the positive sign convention was, check out my video on internal forces. Now I can apply my equations of equilibrium in order to solve this problem. 
So I'm going to start with the sum of forces in the x direction since it seems to be the easiest one for us to deal with. In the x direction I have a 4.5 kN force positive and a shear force also positive. This means that our shear force will be equal to negative four and a half kilonewtons. This negative sign tells me that the shear force is actually acting in the opposite direction than the one that I drew. I can continue by taking my sum of forces in the y direction. I have a positive 14 kilonewton force and a positive normal force. This means that my normal force is equal to negative 14 kilonewtons. This negative means that the normal force is actually acting in compression and not in tension at point D. I can finally find my bending moment by taking my sum of moments about point D, where I will have a bending moment in the positive direction and the moment caused by this force of four and a half kilonewtons. The force of four and a half kilonewtons is acting at a distance of three meters from point D. It is causing a counterclockwise rotation, so I'll give it a positive sign. And now I find that my bending moment is equal to negative 13 and a half kilonewtons meters. This negative means that the bending moment is actually acting in the opposite direction than the one that I drew. So that is how you find the internal forces at a bar for this problem.